This is the Wahoo Kicker Core, and this is the all new Zwift Hub Smart Bike Trainer. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Al Tariq here. Early last week, Wahoo Fitness filed a lawsuit claiming that three patents related to its smart trainers have been infringed upon by Zwift. So, this is really interesting development, and I believe this is the first time we have seen two companies in the indoor cycling space battle things out in court. So, let me give you a quick story background. Wahoo introduced the first gen kicker direct drive trainer back in 2013. At the time, Compute Trainer was the only trainer that offered some of the functionalities that we have in today's modern smart trainers, but it had a lot of limitations that made it difficult to use. The Wahoo Kicker was the first wireless interactive trainer at the time and it utilized open protocols that allowed cycling apps to communicate and interact with the Kicker. Wahoo reaped all the benefits and sold a ton of trainers and even took Racemate, the maker of Compute Trainer, out of business. And along that, it opened the space for cycling apps like Trainer Road and Zwift to innovate and take advantage of the smart interactivity the Kicker offered and ease of use. So this is a great example of what's called a second mover advantage, which in business terms means they take what the first mover created, in this case Compute Trainer, which was all wired old technology and closed system, and Wahoo innovated and improved upon it to appeal to customers and capture market share. Since then, many companies saw what Wahoo did and made their own trainers using similar technology, and now we have different smart trainers from Tax, Elite, Cirrus, Technogym, and many others. In 2018, Wahoo released the Kicker Core with a 12-pound flywheel up to 1800 watts maximum power output and power accuracy within plus minus two percent and up to 16 percent slope simulation and priced it at 899 us dollars so for the specs and price the core was their mid-tier direct drive trainer that was also interactive and offered similar technology to one who's higher end bike trainer but at a more affordable price point then We've seen many companies copy the Kicker Core 2 legs and flywheel design. In 2020, Jet Black, a company out of Australia, made the Jet Black Volt and sold it in some countries, but not here in the United States. Even at the time, I tried to get one for a review, but I couldn't get my hands on one, and it wasn't selling on Amazon or any third-party retailers. Just last month, the Volt was listed on their website for $1,200 US dollars with only a coming soon tax. So last month, Zwift, the software company, announced their entry into the smart trainer market by partnering with Jet Black to sell their Volt under the Zwift Hub brand. This news came only a few months after Zwift announced they are pausing their hardware plans and said that they did not think that it was a wise move to launch a high-end trainer or a high-end smart bike. The hub measures up to 1800 watts with 2.5% accuracy. It also provides up to 16% gradient simulation and has a 10.4 pounds flywheel and can only be ordered on Zwift.com. Even though the Zwift hub integrates nicely with Zwift cycling app, but it also works with other cycling apps like Trainer Road, Wahoo X, and any app that utilizes these open communication protocols so it is not limited to Zwift only. Zwift also put some thought and effort into simplifying the ordering and setup process by allowing you to choose the type of cassette you need during the ordering process. They also simplified the setup process by color coding the feet with blue and orange to make it easier to figure out where each foot goes. The rear axle adapters are attached to an instruction card with a ruler that enables you to check the width of the rear axle of your bike in case you are not sure which one to use. But the biggest disruptor was the price. Zwift priced the hub at $499, which is $400 cheaper than the Kicker Core, and they included a cassette with that. According to a statement from Wahoo, the J Black Vault and Zwift hub clearly infringe on multiple Wahoo US patents. We chose to file these complaints now in the United States under our US IP laws after Zwift announced the launch of its hub 
and such announcement brought to our attention that the Jet Black Vault had become available in the US market. I believe what they meant by the Jet Black Vault had become available in the US market is by selling the Zwift hub, Zwift is essentially bringing the Jet Black Vault into the US market and that infringes on their US patents. Looking at the Jet Black uh, website, the Vault uh, has changed from that $1,200 from a few weeks back to $499 with a coming soon text still displayed. That is the same price as the Zwift hub and searching for the Vault online and on Amazon here in the US, I was able to find the Vault listed on Amazon by a third party seller selling it for $700 and only one available in stock. And according to the court filing, by marketing a copy of Wahoo's patent protected device, Zwift has taken a shortcut that allows it to reap the benefit of Wahoo's innovations but without investing the time and money necessary to create Wahoo's innovations. Wahoo claims that allowing cheap copycat products to sell illegally in the marketplace discourages investment from legitimate companies, leading to stagnating innovation and lower product quality. Wahoo also believes that it will not only infringe on the patent, but allowing copycat products in the market stagnates product innovation and pressure product quality, which is bad for the cycling community. They continue to say that they value Zwift as a partner and our goal is to continue to work together to serve our uh, joint consumer and grow the indoor cycling business. I reached out to Zwift for comments and they said that we reject these allegations, but are not able to comment on litigation and process. So we know companies have been copying each other, especially tech companies. This is nothing new. We have seen trainer companies copy the virtual flywheel design and downhill simulation tags introduced with the Tax Neo, the multiple Bluetooth connections Wahoo started to add to their trainers a few years back. We are starting to see more companies do the same. Elite took the climb technology Wahoo introduced a few years ago and made the Sterzo and added steering to it and opened it to use with other trainer. So I guess what I'm trying to say here in this video is companies gonna copy each other, especially tech, as long as they do it the right way, legally, and copy the good stuff. So what do you think? I wanna hear from you and your thoughts about this whole thing. Let's chat in the comments. Okay, hope you find this video helpful. Remember to hit that like button, and if you are still watching and have not subscribed yet, then you know what to do. Thank you for watching, and see you guys in the next video.